so hello and welcome to the last lesson of theme one unit one GCSE geography um, to finish off we're going to be looking at coastal management strategies so obviously in a similar way to how we looked at rivers eroding the land and causing flooding and having to manage that risk um, we've got a similar issue obviously with the sea eroding the coastline and we've developed lots of urban areas along the coastline lots of tourist industry so if it's left unprotected the sea will continue to erode the coast through hydraulic action abrasion attrition the processes we looked at last lesson you'll get longshore drift going on removing beaches and affecting the tourist economy so we need to manage we need to limit that coastal erosion if we want to protect the land uses that we've built on our coastlines so we're going to identify the social and economic, so to do with people and to do with money and jobs, impacts of coastal erosion internationally. We're going to use somewhere local to us as our case study. We're going to identify the main features of different coastal management strategies. So look at how they work and then evaluate them. What are the upsides and downsides of each one? So if you want to pause here for just a moment, write down the title in your books and we'll get started. OK, so first off, where exactly are we looking at? Let's visualise. So here is a map of the South Wales coastline. Ponta de Lice is around here. Right, there's Swansea city centre. Here's our Gower Peninsula. The area that we're going to be focusing on is right here. All right. So that's where the actual town of Llanetli is built, right on the coastline here. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the shape of the coastline in this area. Okay, you can see it sort of comes in to a point and out again. Now, this is the Lacher estuary, where the river Lacher goes out into what becomes the Bristol Channel. All right, but pay attention to that shape there for a minute. Now, if you imagine, remember last lesson we said that waves are created by the wind, and the wind, in Britain's case, most of the time is coming from the southwest. We have southwesterly prevailing winds. So the winds are coming from down here. They're going in a diagonal direction and hitting the coastline almost straight on where Llanelli is. And if the wind is hitting the coastline in that direction, that means the waves are too. Add to that the shape of the coastline here. It's almost like a funnel. So waves go from being in a really large open area here, being funneled into a much smaller enclosed area here. That's going to increase the energy that they have and therefore increase the erosion that's going to be going on on that coastline. Add to that, Llanetli is actually quite an area of um, quite soft geology. The rock types here aren't particularly resistant to erosion. They're not very um, hard rock types at all. So the rate of erosion will be much faster. And the land is actually quite flat and low lying here. So you're quite near low down at sea level almost in places. So you've got several factors here that make Llanetli vulnerable to erosion and therefore perfect to study the impact of erosion on an area. You've got the southwesterly prevailing winds creating waves that hit Llanetli pretty much head on. You've got the shape of the coastline there that funnels and increases the erosive power of those waves. You've got the soft geology which makes it more vulnerable and the low-lying land which makes it more vulnerable. Now you've got a black and white map of just this area okay it looks like this all right i'd like you to cut that out and stick it down and we're going to annotate it with the features that i've just mentioned that make clinetli vulnerable to erosion so just to give you your bearings again this is the built-up urban area of clinetli itself that is north gower so this coastline here into a point and then around past Lashley here is the sort of funnel shaped area of coastline that I was just pointing out on the previous map okay that dark line there this is a railway line it's the West Wales train line and it runs right along the edge of the coast there so straight away, we've got transport links that are very, very vulnerable, and we could lose those if coastal erosion continues. The slightly darker line just to the north, this line here, 
And this line that loops down around here, this is the B434 Llanelli bypass, again, used for transporting goods, used for commuters getting to work, used for by tourists, um, really important transport links. We've got lots of urban land use in the area that's right on the edge of the coastline that's in danger of being affected by erosion. So cut and stick this map and add a few little annotations onto it. Now, because it's in black and white, you might find that you want to write these little boxes on the edge of your map and then add arrows onto the map because you, the writing straight on top of the map might not show up very well. So the prevailing winds come from the southwest and they create really strong waves that southwest is down here. So they're going to be coming in and hitting that coastline head on anyway. Add to that the shape of the bay that we were talking about that sort of funnels and strengthens the erosive energy of the waves. Plus, so that's just highlighting the area at highest risk of erosion. Plus, we've got the really soft geology and we've got the low lying land as well. And this is just a photographic illustration of what I was talking about, how close that train line. So this train line running along here, just how close that train line is to the edge, to being lost to coastal erosion. And that is a crucial train line for trade for businesses. Tata Steel is just here. Um, as well as um, tourism through to West Wales in the, in the summer months in particular. So cut and stick that map, annotate it to illustrate why Llanetli is at high risk of erosion. Um, you could put a subheading if you like, why is Llanetli at high risk of erosion above the map? So pause the video here and do that quickly, please. OK, so let's look in a little bit more detail at what land use is actually going on in here. All right. So I've screenshot Google Earth to just look at purely this part here. All right. So we're zooming in a little bit more closely again. And we're going to be focusing on the residential, the housing area of Llanetli, the railway line that we've already picked out, the bypass, the busy road that we've already picked out. And we're also going to be introducing the Lucha Estuary, uh, the Machanes Golf Club, Tata Steel and Trostra Retail Park as well. And an area called North Dock, which is right here. OK, so this is what that area looks like zoomed in on Google Earth. Um, what you've got here, the North Dock area is around here. Many of you will have visited this. There's a little boating lake here. There's the Sospan restaurant. There's the Millennium Coastal Path being built along here. There's some really posh Millennium Key housing been built here. It's quite expensive due to the nice coastal view. There's a little ice cream parlour here and a visitor's centre. They're aware of coastal erosion in the area, so you'll see these weird things sticking out here. These are fishtail groins. Now, we touched on groins last lesson. They trap the sand being um, transported by longshore drift, so they're great for protecting the tourist economy in areas where you don't want to lose the beach. Um, and these ones have got this kind of fishtail design to the end of them, because what that also helps to do is called a breakwater. It blocks the erosive energy of the waves. It breaks up the wave energy before it reaches the coastline, so it doesn't erode as much. If we come down a little bit, Machanes Gold Club is down here. There's the Lacha Estuary. So just off the image, the River Lacha comes down here and flows out into the Bristol Channel off out to the southwest down there. Tata Steel is just off the map here spreads over quite a large area. Oh, it's actually labelled there, look. You've got the Trostra Retail Park. Park of Scarlet's would be in this area as well. There it is. OK, there's the train line that we were talking about running right through the middle of the image. And there's the B4304 Llanetli Bypass as well. That's a crucial transport link. So cut and stick this satellite image down, please. And I think you already have these labels on there for you, just to give you your bearings. OK, I've also given you the version of this map that is in a, in a map view. It's more of a white background and you might be able to see things a little bit more clearly. It looks like this. OK. So cut and stick both maps just so you're really clear on the land use in the area. 
you've got tourism going on over here. You've got people living here, residents. You've got people working here and making a lot of money for the economy in that retail park, that shopping park. You've got people working here. Over a thousand people employed in Tata Steel here. Very high paying jobs, in fact. Um, did you know all of Heinz baked bean tins get the steel that they need from that from that plant to make their baked bean tins? Same with Crown Paint. Random but interesting fact. Um, there's your Lacharestri. So you've got leisure facilities down here. That also there's a spa in Machanes as well. So that's really good for the local economy. Lots of jobs. Now, the transport links, the train line and the bypass, they are crucial for commuters getting back and forth to work to earn money to support their families. They're crucial for transporting goods between West Wales and East Wales and through to England and the rest of Britain. Therefore, again, supporting the economy. Um, they're also cru crucial for tourism. People use those transport links to get to West Wales all the way down uh, past Carmarthen towards Tenby, Saunders, but they're pretty crucial. All linked to jobs in the economy. So what I've done here is I have picked one of the land uses and I have explained how, if coastal erosion continued, what the effect would be of losing this area. Because it is all very low lying. It's quite close to sea level. If there were no defences, it wouldn't take long before we did lose most of this. OK, especially with, this, with sea level rise being a concern due to global warming. So I've gone for the train line. I've gone for the railway line. And I've said, if the West Wales train line were destroyed, it would mean goods can't be transported. And that's going to also limit the number of tourists going to West Wales. That would mean less money for businesses. People might lose their jobs. They've got less disposable income. Remember, we touched on that last lesson. That's the amount of spare cash you have left to spend on nice things. And that's going to mean that their standard of living is going to go down. They're not going to be able to maybe keep their homes, keep their nice cars and buy nice things. In addition to that, less money coming into the economy would mean that the area doesn't have any money to spend on repairing potholes, on maintaining um, Internet connections, electricity connections, sewage pipelines, water pipelines, all that behind the scenes stuff that makes an area run. We call that infrastructure. So the whole fleshly area could decline because there's not enough money coming into the economy to maintain it. What I'd like you to do is put down that subheading, cut and stick that map, copy that example, and then pick one or preferably two more land uses from the map, any of the things written on in black, and in your own words, just two, maybe three sentences max for each one, explain how, if they were lost due to coastal erosion, what would the effect be? I've got a little word bank here for you to use if you need it. OK, so subheading, stick the map, copy the example and choose one or two more land uses. Use the word bank to help you write a couple of sentences about the effect of them being lost. OK, so clearly there's no exaggeration, millions of pounds worth of investment in this area. If we did nothing, if there were no coastal defences at all, coastal erosion, sea level rise, increasing levels of coastal erosion would destroy the land use in this area. Massive effect on people, massive effect on the economy. So we need to put defences in place. We need to manage that coastal erosion. There's lots of ways that you can do this. You can put a sea wall in. It's exactly what it says on the tin. It is a concrete wall that reflects the wave energy back out to sea. Very, very effective, but therefore very, very expensive. And it's made of concrete. Now, when you manufacture concrete, that releases carbon dioxide during its production, which adds to climate change. Climate change causes ice caps to melt, causing sea level rise, causing more erosion. So they're great in the short term highly effective but they could be contributing to a longer term problem that kind of therefore cancels out their effectiveness you could use more natural material just massive boulders this is called rock armor or riprap and what this does is it breaks up the wave energy as the waves crash onto the shoreline so they crash onto here and break up instead of crashing onto the land and eroding the material from the coastline 
You could also put a fishtail groin in. They've got these internationally, like I just showed you on the previous maps. So that's the groin element. Now, in this case, sometimes groins are made out of wood. In this case, they're made out of um, large rock boulders. So what this does, as longshore drift comes swash, backwash, swash, backwash, swash, back washing along it traps all the sand so this is great for tourism it protects the beach from being transported away there's an extra element to these types of groins and this is why they're called a fishtail groin this end part is called a breakwater again it does exactly what it says on the tin it breaks up the water so as the waves are trying to crash up onto the shoreline it breaks up the energy and stops them from doing so natural material great not bad to look at because there are natural materials. It's not going to have a negative impact on people wanting to visit the area and therefore a negative impact on the tourist economy. Oh, <laughs> there we are. Here's um, another image of where internationally they've actually combined some riprap or rock armour with a sea wall to try and protect that railway line that we were talking about. You can see how close it is to the edge there. It's just rip wrap and rock armor and a seawall from another perspective. These are also groins. They're just made out of wood in this instance. Now, natural material again, so better from an environmental point of view. But because they're a natural material, these will erode over time and will need replacing and need maintaining. So they could become more expensive in the long run. Same with the rip wrap and the rock armor. Same with the rock groins in the fishtail groins. Any natural material, the main upside it's more sustainable from an environmental point of view in the short term. The main downside, because it's a natural material, they will break down and they will need maintaining and that will have cost in the long run. So it's less economically sustainable. OK, here's another option. This is called beach nourishment. This is actually going on down in Llethley. That's the visitor centre that I pointed out to you on the map. There's a little cafe in there. There's a little ice cream parlour on the other side. You can see just off the image here, the edge of part of the walkway. Now, beach nourishment is where you take sand or pebbles, either from another area of the beach, maybe up by one of the groins where the sand has been collected, or it could be from a quarry or another area entirely. Um, and you use trucks to redistribute, to spread the sand and pebbles back out across the beach. So you're just putting back what's been moved by the sea. Sometimes it's sand, like in this case, Sometimes it's pebbles like in this, or shingle, like in this case. Um, this is super cheap to do. Um, it involves no man-made materials. It's really quick and easy, but you're not actually stopping the erosion. You're going to have to keep doing it forever more, uh, which can make it quite time consuming and expensive in the long run, although it's cheap and quick in the short run. OK, so. All of those options come under a category called hold the line. You're trying to hold the coastline where it is, stop it from eroding any further. So you're putting in defences to hold the coastline in one piece. The alternative is you don't. You don't put any defences in place at all. You allow the coastline to retreat. You allow it to erode. That's called managed retreat. OK, so. You've got these two categories here, these two options. You either put lots of defences in place and you hold the line, or you do nothing. Managed retreat. Now then, you've got a sheet that looks like this. This sheet gives a very basic breakdown of some of the defences that I've just covered, as well as some others that, that aren't on the list, like a revetment and gabions and things like that. Don't worry too much about those. I'd like you to rewind and re-listen to what I've said, coupled with this sheet, pick out the main points to create a table evaluating the different coastal management strategies that are going on down internationally. Okay, so you've also got on your handout a photograph for each one. You should be able to, from what I've said and from the sheet, Pick out a couple of bullet points as to how it works, a couple of bullet points of upsides and a couple of bullet points of downsides. The main things you're on the lookout for are, is it going to cost a lot or is it quite cheap? Is it going to damage the environment in some way or not? Is it made of natural materials, which is more environmentally sustainable in the short term? 
but could be less economically sustainable in the long term because you're going to have to replace them because natural materials will erode. Um, so yeah, just rewind, have another listen, try to pick out the main points and fill in at least two or three bullet points in each of these boxes. I suggest you take a whole page turn sideways, leave yourself plenty of space. I've done manage to retreat for you as an example so you can see the kind of thing that you're aiming for. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, this subheading, this table, rewind and re-listen and use the sheet as well to help you. Okay, so the final thing to do is an overall weighing up of whether it's better to go for hold the line, which is a combination of defense methods, or overall, would it be better to just leave it be? Let the coastline erode. Now you have got a sheet again, with some statements on it. Some of these statements are to do with defences, hold the line. Some of them are to do with not putting defences in, managed retreat. The first thing you need to do for each one is ask yourself, is this to do with managed retreat? Is it to do with no defences? Or is it to do with hold the line? Is it to do with defences? Once you've decided which approach it relates to, you then need to decide whether it's an upside or downside of that approach. So, for example, walking and cycling paths can be created on seawalls to attract people to the area. Right. My first question to myself, is that about defences? Is it about hold the line or is it about doing nothing? Is it about managed retreat? This one mentions seawalls. It's clearly about hold the line. It's about defences. And if you can put walking and cycling paths on there, it's going to attract people to the area. They're going to spend money in the area. That's going to boost the economy. It's going to be good for tourism. So this is an advantage of hold the line. So I would cut and stick or copy out if you prefer. I would cut and stick that statement in here. OK, so this is the final task. We're weighing up. Do we put in a load of defences? and go with hold the line or do we do nothing and go with manage retreat? All right, so put down that subheading, take a whole page turn sideways again. Now, if you're cutting and sticking, even with a whole page turn sideways, you might find you need to sort of fold up some of the statements, or if you prefer, you're welcome to just write them out as bullet points if you're fed up of cutting and sticking. So that statement that I just went over, that you can put walkways and cycling paths on the top of sea walls and that attracts visitors, that's an upside. That's a good thing of hold the line. So I'd cut and stick it in here. One more example. Um, longshore drift and cliff erosion are natural processes that should be allowed to continue. So there's no mention of defences here. This is about managed retreat. And it's talking about the fact that it's natural processes. It's better for the environment. It's more environmentally sustainable. So this is managed retreat. Good thing. So I would cut and stick or copy that into manage retreat. Good thing. That would go in here. So any advantages of defences go in here. Any disadvantages of defences go in here. Any advantages of doing nothing go in here. It's probably going to be mostly to do with the environment. And any disadvantages of doing nothing go in here. OK. And that is the final task to theme one, unit one of GCSE Geography. Pause the video here and do that quickly, please. Okay, final lesson done. If you're looking at this slide right now, you have done an incredible job. You have covered seven weeks worth of content, almost. Um, what you would have covered from May half term until almost the summer. But of course, we haven't been able to do it face to face, which is a real shame. But if you're sat here looking at this slide, you need to give yourself a serious pat on the back because this, I bet, has not been easy. Um, the final thing to do, 
if we were together in class, what we would do next is an end of theme past paper. So an actual past paper from a real past exam. Now we do it open book in school because I don't want these past papers to be stressful and trip you up and really hit your confidence. I want them to be a learning tool. So I'm going to put the past paper onto Moodle and there's going to be an assessment drop for you to submit that past paper. Now, like I said, if we were together, we'd be doing an open book. So same with doing it at home. I don't mind if you look up a few things in your book, okay? And then drop it into the assignment drop and I will mark it. The main purpose of these past paper questions is to work on exam technique. There's going to be lots of tips and tricks that you don't have in your skill set yet that will enable you to tackle these questions far quicker and far more skillfully later down the line. So I don't mind you looking up the knowledge. We're going to use them as a learning tool to increase your technique and confidence with exams. So what you need to do now or when you're next ready to do any geography is go on to Moodle, go on to the Key Stage 4 Study Zone, find the theme one end of theme past paper, give it a go, drop it in the assignment drop and I will mark it for you. Any questions or queries as usual, drop me an email. Hopefully I will see you all soon.